Hi there, I'm Frank Crenshaw. This is Frank's Plastic Modeling Page. I'm going to do a little update on my Seawolf submarine. Um, I had to stop building this um, because I uh, had a decal problem. Um, the kit decals, as uh, you can see here, the uh, fonts are way oversized. And uh, these numbers, I don't know, I feel like they're a little too big. But And also they're just spaced evenly. And that's actually a problem on a curved surface like this. Um, if you... Uh, try to explain it. I have a background in math and I'm not the best math teacher, but this is the level of the water and this would be the hull of the submarine. So uh, where this is, that's your water level. And as the water level rises, like say the sub is submerging or rising, when you're down near where the, you know, the water level is actually kind of tangent to the, uh, to the surface where, where the marking for the for the water level is tangent, you know, the marking on the side of the submarine is tangent to the, to the, uh, to the, it's tangent to the, to the surface of the sub, but it's, it's, uh, also perpendicular to the water level. Now these, um, particular markings will be spaced fairly evenly because if I go up a foot, since it's more or less flat, it's about a foot. So these are about a foot apart. But as I go further up, as the sub sinks deeper into the water, what's happening is for little changes in the depth, I'm having very big changes in the length of this curb because it's a nonlinear relationship. So it's, so where here, the markings might just be, you know, a foot apart. Up here, they might be two feet apart because, because of the curved distance of the water rising. So, so that, that shows up in the decals. And as you can see, Trumpeter, of course, and probably everybody else, just spaced them equally. You know, and I guess you you can't tell, but I can tell. I mean, I I can tell. So so I decided to fix that. And my solution was to order a set of microscale decals, and this these are seventy second scale, navy font, um, in white. And as everybody knows, microscale decals just work great. But I'm going to actually use these numbers right here. They're a little bit big. But they're smaller than the trumpeter ones, but maybe, I think they'll be okay. You know, I don't think they'll look gross or out of place. Now the question is, how do I put them in there? Well, I built myself a guide, and I did that in software. And then I printed it out in my cutter, and that's, that's all it looks like right there. And that has all the correct spacing so that, that each marking, this is for the front, the front set of markings, and this is for the, the markings near the rear of the torpedo tube. This will show me where they go. Now, I've actually placed that guide on the model right here. And it's just going to show me where I'm going to put my decals. I mean, it's no big deal, right? But that's, once again, the, the Cameo plotter shows me a way that it's extremely useful in my modeling. So uh, that's how I'm going to do that. Um, one of the things that I've been talking about a little bit is this is the, uh, this is the propulsor unit that I scratch built, essentially. This is made out of a... This is a 3D printed part, and uh, it's been painted. It hasn't been weathered yet, but but it will be. And uh, it's it's uh, sort of the heart of this build. It really stands out. You can really see it. I'm super, super excited I did this. I, I have to admit, I didn't think I wanted to go to the work to add this thing. But the end result is just so much nicer than what the kit gives you. Let's see if I can put it in without breaking it. I've only done this a hundred times. There it goes. But anyway, it just sits right in there. And uh, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but it looks kind of like maybe a submarine pump to those of us who've never actually seen one, except maybe in a video game. And I actually modeled this off the uh, submarine pump in a game called Cold Waters. Um, there's a, a magnet in here. So this just attaches to the rear of the sub and I can just pull it off whenever. That will aid in transportation, and, um, you know, I don't have to worry about this thing busting off. So that's kind of nice. Now, I have painted the submarine, and I, I posted pics online, and, uh, you know, just, uh, just to make this thing sort of a dusty, rubbery, shaded look, I did some pre-painting, and it's very subtle. 
and that's that's how I like to build. I like to build a subtle, a subtle, the subtle kind of details like that. Um, this will not jump out at a person. This isn't going to just reach off the table and grab them by their eyeballs and say, "Hey, look at me." This is very subtle. The person who looks at this will see the detail if they look, and as they look, they'll see more detail. And if they're familiar with this kit, they'll even see more. And that's what I like to do. And those are the models that I like the most when I go to shows are those models that sort of draw me in. So that's how I build. Now, this is just my base paint. Um, I will now weather once I get these decals on. And, and I'm running out of time. So hopefully this works. But uh, so all I have to do is stick a few of these decals on and I think we're good to go. The first step in doing these decals will be to trim the film. Um, I want them to, to be very tight and very, very close sitting. And the only way I can do that is to trim the film. The easiest way to do that is to use a simple ruler. And a scalpel. So now I'm ready to decal. Decaling is one of those things that everybody has a theory and a philosophy and... I guess whatever works is the best way to do it. It's, there really isn't a right or wrong way to do it. But uh, for those of you who are interested, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Now, I started this model um, by painting it with uh, Mission Models Paint that I had mixed a uh, percentage of future floor wax in. Um, the effect that has on the paint is to make it very, very, not shiny, but it makes it very smooth. So... I will not be clear coating this model because basically I already did when I painted it. Um, at least I clear coated it enough for me. Um, you know, I, these decals that I'm using, I'm not going to have any trouble with. Now, I always keep on my bench when I'm decaling a steel ruler. I actually keep my uh, uh, solvents. And the only solvent I need when I'm doing microscale decals is a little bit of microsol, a little bit of microset. And this is just a laundry cup, a laundry soap cup from a liquid detergent. Um, this little container has distilled water in it. And I find distilled water to be very effective because it, it's not affected by, uh, you know, chemicals in your water, um, dissolved solids. So uh, I don't know that you need distilled water, but I've been using it for years and I like it. So that's what I do. Now, this little contraption here is just a pencil box, a crayon box with a couple pieces of sponges in it. And sitting on those sponges are my decals that I've cut out. And those are the individual numbers to do one, one step. And that's how we're going to do this. We're going to do them one at a time. So uh, from that decal sheet, I trimmed out all these numbers. And now I'm simply going to put them on. And uh, you get to watch that and uh, fast forward. And hopefully the camera will actually catch that. Okay, that's the majority of decals on this side. I guess we'll flip it over and do the other side. And hopefully the next time I talk to you guys, I'll have something more interesting to show.